The most impactful long-term thing we launched is the Boss Box. And the reason there is because of solar is always run into a serious soft cost gap. The value or the depreciation of my home or adding things onto it or fire code or anything like that, that I would want the Boss Box. That there's gonna be a refocus on uh, cost effectiveness of systems and uh, core value. Uh, I think that there'll probably be some sea changes in regulations and uh, government support for the industry. It's gonna really make innovators have to step up. Yeah, we're out here at InterSolar San Diego 2025. Uh, we came out with some very uh, special project or products this year, four brand new ones to be specific. Um, I brought in Miss Miranda Miles from our branding and support team, and uh, we're gonna talk about a few of those products and what were her favorites. Um, Miranda, you wanna give us a little history on your background, kind of where you came from, what you're all about? Yeah, absolutely. So I work on the sales and marketing team here at EG4. Um, they took me in from a lot of sales background. I come from retail sales, which is a totally different world. A totally different world than um, OEM marketing and OEM sales and support. And they really taught me everything you need to know about solar. EG4 is a great company to work for if you really want to dive into the solar industry and be nurtured from the beginning. So well, it's been a really good experience so far. And, and how long have you been with us now? Like almost, almost a year? Um, no, not even. Really? And I, I know it feels like my experience. It feels like a lifetime. It feels like a lifetime. Um, I've been with the company since October. Okay. Uh, but since then have absorbed about a year's worth of education for sure. Absolutely. Really the important thing about working for a solar industry or a a company of any sort um, in the solar industry coming from, from outside the solar industry. Right. You don't just learn about your products is something that I realized. You I, learn about everybody's products. The entire ecosystem. That's right. So where I am familiar with our products, I had to be familiar with the entire ecosystem, the whole solar right. industry, and all different kind of moving parts I go into it. So it's been been a lot of education in the last couple of months. Yeah, well, I, I, I've been with the company now, uh, I think just a little over a year. And uh, in a year, it's just been headaches every day of just knowledge that just is dumped into my brain from our research and development team and our you know, sales and marketing team and, and my training team. But uh, so I, I briefly mentioned that we had four new products that launched out here at InterSolar this year. Um, of those four products, which one would, would be your favorite and why? Man, we have so many really great products that we just launched. Um, and I've been waiting to talk about it for like a month. Every time somebody asks me a question, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm sorry, you can't talk about it right now, you guys. Um, so today it's been like a month's worth of, of like holding things back and just all explodes in a matter of two it, days. Did it feel like anxiety, just like constant pressure in there where you want to just explode and tell everybody about all the great stuff yeah, you're dealing? You just want to tell them, especially when they ask questions about something they might have seen online or, right. or whatever. You know, we, so, we put those little hints out there like on our LinkedIn and stuff like that. You know, people call, I get the calls too, and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm hands off, you know, until, until it launches. Yeah, if you guys haven't guessed what our, our last LinkedIn post, it was kind of like a uh, a, a, who's that Pokemon idea? Like, guess that, uh, guess that product. Right. Um, and it's really fun for them to see what they think that we're going to come out with because it's also a good way to get some information about what they want to see. That's right. That's so I think it's good for for product lineups coming in the future for sure. So, so which one? What, what's your what's your number one? If you if you had to pick one of the four, what would it be? One of the four, yeah. probably the Boss Box. It's just unlike anything you've seen in, um in general at least i've seen in general for okay it, it's clean it it's a good way i know that i as a homeowner if i wanted to get a product on installed on my house and i was worried about the value or the depreciation of my home or adding things onto it or fire code or anything like that that i would want the boss box boss box being the best case scenario for maximizing the amount of of inverters and batteries i can have and separating it from my home in a way where it's still clean it looks good from the road yeah. you don't have to stick it on your house it's still serviceable in a lot of ways and it's a pretty straightforward install you put down a concrete slab you add the block the boss box yeah it, it it is it's also one of my favorites uh the only thing i would i would say in relationship to that is once it's assembled the weight of it uh you know we're we're roughly in the 2000 pound range we're looking at a ton 
So if it is assembled, moving it then becomes an issue, right? If you ever wanted to do like a mobile power plant, um, I've had a couple of customers this week at, here at Intersolar that were like, yeah, I'll just put it on a utility trailer and I'll tow it with my truck. Not highly recommended, but it's really crisp, clean look for right outside your home. You can stick it about four feet away from the house or farther, um, run your conduit to the home, um, connect it straight to the grid, and you've got you know, two inverters, depending on what inverters you use and, you know, three 14.3 kilowatt hour batteries that fit in there. Yeah. And you've got a really nice backup system for your home. Yeah. And, and it's lockable, right? So you, then you can secure those batteries in there and make sure that nobody's in there messing around. Nobody's touching stuff they're not supposed to. You're not worried about any kind of electrical shock hazards, which is great. I also enjoy the Boss Box a lot. It's it, it's a great product. Um, it's got a lot of versatility in, in the industry. I could see it being used in, you know, farm properties, um, off-grid cabins, you know, up in the mountains somewhere, something like that. But the FlexBoss 18, talk of the show so far. The FlexBoss 18 is a great, great, great solution. I think we got a lot of feedback about the FlexBoss 21. It was a great solution for something higher powered. And, right. And then they they just didn't need that much power and they wanted more cost-effective solutions. That's right. It's just a little bit better for homeowners, more suitable to their homes. How many of, of your homeowners are actually using 16 kilowatts of continuous? Right. Well, I mean, my house probably. You know, my, my kids don't know how to turn stuff off. So that's just kind of the nature of the beast. You know, and uh, I remember when we launched the FlexBoss 21, uh, RE Plus Anaheim last year, I know you weren't quite with us then. Um, but when that launched, a lot of the concerns I heard were that it didn't have an LCD screen, right? There was no way to do any kind of functional programming internal into the unit, right? Like our 18K PV. So when we launched, then I'm going to get into product number three here real quick, is our mobile or optional LCD screen that can then be added to those inverters. Um, so, so it gives you the best of both worlds, right? If you don't need it and you've got good strong Wi-Fi and you can go into our monitoring system and do all your application settings and, and get it commissioned, you don't need it. But let's say that you're in an off-grid environment or you don't want to attach the system to Wi-Fi, you know, you're concerned with maybe uh, security issues or something like that, you have that option of buying that LCD screen and then doing all your settings and programmings directly from the inverter. Absolutely, it kind of it eliminates the the need for mobile. I have a lot of a lot of installers who have customers who liked the idea of having an LCD screen because they don't want us to be looking at That's it. Right. They don't want anybody to be looking at it through any kind of mobile network. They just want to be able to, to have the security that you are. that gets visible. Um, I would not mess with an LCD screen. I kind of appreciated that it was a little more cost effective to take it out. Sure. But I do understand the need for it because the moment my internet goes out, I can't, I can't use my, I can't Look. configure anything. The, the internet went out because the grid went out and then it, it took time to get everything reconfigured. But I can just have this, this security and peace of mind knowing. I can look at that screen and everything's operating as it should right. and I can check my batteries. And so like that. funny story today, one of my installers um, shot me a message today here at Intersolar. Um, he was out in the field and the homeowner prior to going out on site had told him that he had Wi-Fi. Um, upon arrival at the job site, that turned out to not be the case. Um, and they, of course, were installing a grid boss and, and a flex boss 21. And he texts me and goes, hey, how do I commission this with no Wi-Fi? There's no LCD screen. There's there's no optional settings that he can do. And of course, we can't get him an LCD screen. We're here in San Diego. He's somewhere else. Um, I believe he's in Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and thankfully, you know, we, we came to a resolution. Basically, we had him turn his hotspot on on his phone, which gave him Wi-Fi signal so he could actually get the dongle online. And then once he had the dongle online, he was able to go into the application and do the settings changes. But that would have been a problem. That wouldn't have been a problem had he had an LCD screen, especially with her customer who doesn't have internet or doesn't intend to get internet. Or, yeah, to ever have, right. Yeah, and then, you know, the, with the availability of our, our cellular dongles, you might not have the opportunity to do a cellular signal. You might need an LCD screen for some That's situations correct. like that. Now, I haven't really had a bunch of time to go look at that LCD screen. I think you probably spend more time with most of our products than I do because um, I'm in the field all the time. You guys are in the office. You're local to Sulphur Springs. Um, is that LCD screen removable and transferable? Or, or is it required to stay inside the inverter that you purchase no, it for? Absolutely not. You can actually put it anywhere that you have the cable long enough for. You can kind of configure it as you want. So I've seen a lot of people who put their Flex Boss and their Grid Boss side by side, and they might put that that screen right in between it. You could hang it from the inside. Um, what if, what, but what if you wanted to use it, may, maybe not leave it on site, but you wanted to utilize it for commissioning and then have the installer take it back with them and then utilize that at other projects? No, you, absolutely, because you can set it and configure the system. The system's configured. It's got all of its settings done. It's what, one cable probably to unplug it and, and move it along. 
And uh, once all that is kind of set in stone, the installer can reuse that for multiple commissioning. So, so, so may maybe that is really the the value proposition, right? It, is if customers are looking into buying the, or going into the Flex Wall series, right? The Flex Flex, excuse me, Flex Boss Twenty One, the Flex Boss Eighteen, and the Grid Boss. That LCD screen may just be something that an EPC or an installer would buy. You know, maybe two or three of them, give them to their install teams, and then just continually pull those out once the system is commissioned and online. That's a great point. And some other points, um, some other products like, that make it easier for installers or even more cost effective. Some of the other boxes that we have come out with, we had the tandem and the. And oh, the, you know, I I totally forgot about those. God bless you. Yeah, the tandem and the and the stride conduit boxes. So on top of kind of being cost effective in that way where they can have one tool that they reuse when you use, right, you're going to spend less time running wires or find your own conduit separate of our new stride and tandem conduit boxes. All right. So, so I just want to get this straight for all the viewers at home. Our stride conduit box is it's the longer of the two. Yeah. And then the tandem is the deeper, right? So yeah. tandem, you can do two batteries forward facing just side by side right in front of each other. And then the tandem box, or I'm sorry, the stride box is two batteries separate. Two batteries separate. The great thing about the stride box is that it is UL compliant, right? So you can do up to six inches between batteries for our UL 95. Six inches. Six inches. It's a little wider than that. We know that some AHJs are a little bit different. Some sure. AHJs require a little more than six inches. So usually, two, usually 12 inches, I think. Yeah, it's usually yep. about 12 inches. So the distance between the batteries that we did for the stride box is going to be that 12 inches between batteries giving you that extra option some ha's might require some things and then you need one box instead of two and then you have the tandem which is not ul rated it's not ul compliant however it's really great for off-grid situations where you have more floor space than you do on the wall space right being able to double stack those batteries right one on top of the other and all of their cables are still you know reachable everything is 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 easy to um adjust hey miranda i do want to thank you for coming out on my uh very first special episode of grid gun wild here at inner solar san diego uh 2025 if you didn't come by this year uh be sure to check us out at SolarCon las vegas and re plus las vegas coming later this year and uh thank you so much and uh we got james showalter coming on next yeah thank you guys hey guys welcome back to our special edition of grid gun wild here at inner solar 2025 i am here with the man the myth the legend the ceo and founder of eg4 electronics mr james showalter james how are you this morning we're doing great this morning i'm enjoying the show and uh you know, just seeing all the traffic over here and uh, really the just the industry on the move and uh, and everybody trying to double down and, and just make their make their businesses better with uh, all the opportunities here. Yeah, it's been an unbelievable show. Thank you for coming on the podcast, by the way. We really do enjoy it and, uh, and appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. I know we did a lot of new product launches, you know, this week here at Inner Solar. Of, of the five new products we launched, kind of what, what's your favorite and why? Well, you know, I, th I think the most impactful long-term thing we launched is the boss box okay also also my personal favorite yeah and, and the reason there is because of solar is always run into a serious soft cost gap mm. where it takes very specialized labor i mean nathan you're out there on the job sites training people on how to you know build complex systems on homeowners walls and there's just a lot of just like specialized labor there and I think the boss box is going to be an opportunity to really cost effectively as a manufacturer, ship out a pre-commissioned system mm -hmm. where we can have an install that's equivalent to just a classic generator install. And we can kind of get a lot closer to commoditizing the cost of energy independence installation. So okay. uh, that, that's what I'm excited about uh, as a number one. But we did do four other things for a good reason, though. <laughs> Okay. I mean, we can absolutely touch on all those. I know we've got the two new conduit boxes, which I, yeah. I absolutely love. Um, the portable LCD screen, another great one. Uh, but I'd love to touch on this guy right over here, uh, which is our new battery dolly. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the the, the PowerLift Pro mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, lift our m modules and, and uh, put them on the wall. You know, I think batteries are going to stay close to that 300-pound format. There's a lot of smaller options, but there's going to be a huge domestic content pressure for batteries and i don't think you can really get away building uh as a uh, much less than a 300 pound module with the domestic cells that have been moved over here uh so that makes things a lot easier and uh you know these these 300 these 300 pound format batteries are super cost effective uh and once you set them they're good but the dolly can do the lift work 
as well. I've seen some other guys with different strategies already, but I think this could be just a universal solution where you can just grab that and get to get to work with us. Absolutely. And, and I love that the bigger tire size makes it nice and maneuverable through rough terrain, rocks, gravel, you know, maybe, maybe some loose soil and stuff like that. So I think it's going to be great. Um, I can't wait to see it in action. I haven't had an opportunity to play with it yet. Um, but this week has just been incredible, man. We've had, you know, lots of, uh, you know, different installation partners. We've had distribution partners that we've partnered up with over the last year that have been through the booth. Kind, kind of where do, where do you see that that coming this next year? Well, this next year is going to be kind of a transition year. Um, you know, I think that uh, that there's going to be a refocus on uh, cost effectiveness of systems and uh, core value. Uh, I think that there'll probably be some sea changes in regulations and uh, government support for the industry. It's going to really make innovators have to step up mm -hmm. and provide more value. And so uh, we already are seeing the traffic come to EG4, but as those, those changes happen this year, it'll be a big deal. Absolutely. Uh, I, I can't wait. I, I know we talked briefly about it. Well, where is our new manufacturing facility? Uh, so it's about 20 miles from the headquarters, Nathan. Uh, it's a separate manufacturing corporation that we set up uh, in Commerce, Texas. Okay. So we got about 50 guys on the lines right now making the Flexboss inverters and the 12,000 XP. Oh, okay. So we're already manufacturing in, in that market there. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's you know, what they call SKD-based manufacturing. So it's just the final uh, manufacturing uh, adhesion on the... Uh, of the heat sinks and then uh, quality control and everything else. So you're getting an American assembled and quality control product, uh, which is, is just a majority actually of the manufacturing stuff. I've been to these factories that we were originally using in Asia, mm -hmm. but we're gonna go down the stream and get to higher and higher American content levels over the year. Perfect, perfect. Hey, well, I do wanna thank you, James, so much for coming out and uh, sitting down for a couple minutes. I know you've got a full, full day schedule today. I know the show's gonna open here in just a little bit. For all you guys out there, please come check us out at SolarCon in Las Vegas, RE Plus Las Vegas, and be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time on Greek Gone Wild. Can't wait to see you guys at those shows.